Good morning, my diamonds. My TikToker, Sheila True Love, here with you. Today is Wednesday, uh, September 25th. I know I'm getting this message out late. I've been going through it with my family, my adult children. Woo! So I'm a little late today, <clears throat> and I apologize. Today we're going to focus on, because you know how Satan the devil works. He could even use your children against you to try to get you distracted. We're going to talk about whom shall, shall I fear? And that's from Psalms chapter 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid of? I think that if we really understood how powerful God is and Jesus Christ, and how much they love us, we would have a lot less fear in our lives. The psalmist David, he writes often of fear and how to avoid it. Fear prevents us from going forward in life. It hinders us from doing the things that God wants us to do. We can feel fear and still do not want God's what, what, want what God wants us to do. <clears throat> excuse me remembering that that is our stronghold a stronghold is a defensive structure a refuge in times of trouble it is a place we can run to and know and we know that we will be safe so when you have trouble who do you run to some people they run to their friends they run to their spouse or their pastor, but we should always run to God. We should always run, run to him first because he is our stronghold in times of trouble. He wants us to trust him and be courageous. Courage is not the absence of fear, but moving forward in the presence of fear. Why can we do this? Because we know that God is always with us and his strength, his strength, his strength, better yet, is made perfect in our weakness. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse nine. <clears throat> Don't live your life in fear. Instead, confront fear in faith and it will run away from you. So let's go to our heavenly father in prayer. Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Jehovah, please, please, Father, help us to do all that you want us to do and not ever to let fear stop us. Now, being raised as a Jehovah's Witness, as you know, I had a fear of the governing body. The Bible says that we're not supposed to have fear or be afraid of no man. But they have that kind of fear when it comes to keeping Jehovah's Witnesses trapped in that organization. You notice how I talk about Jehovah's Witnesses a lot because I was raised in that organization for 55 years. So I know what I'm talking about and the damage, the damage that it has done to my life. Well, it did before Jehovah God pulled me out and drew me to his son, Jesus Christ. But it's, it's continuing to do so much damage to people, which is why I speak about it so much. Let me share my power thoughts with you today, this morning. And here we go, my beautiful diamonds. Hi, friends. Amy Seifert here, speaker, author, Bible teacher from Northwest Ohio. And the verse of the day today is Psalm 139.10 that says, Even there your hand will lead me and your right hand will guide me. When my kids were little, we used to play this little game and I would say, there's nothing you can do that will make me love you less. And they'd say nothing. And I'd say nothing. And they would ask all these questions and then they would get really absurd. And at one point, my youngest son said, even if we burn the house down, I was like, don't do that. But yes, I will still love you even there standing in the rubble of our burnt down house. And in this passage, in this moment, it feels like David is asking that of God, like even there is your spirit here? Even there will your love guide us and hold us? And the answer is yes. So David in Psalm 139 is really celebrating that God is omnipresent, that he's everywhere. And he's saying even in the darkest, most remote places of our lives, 
he is there. And not only is God there, but there are two promises from this verse. God will lead you and he will guide you. And I love that Greek word lead. It's nacha. And it's this tenderness of leading someone who is lost or helpless in a kind way. I don't know if you feel like that today in your land of even there, even there in your broken marriage, he will lead and guide you. Even there in the place where you fear rejection, he will lead, hold you, guide you. Even there where you have this chronic pain, he will lead you and hold you. Even there in the darkest place. And so today I want you guys to take a breath with me. Make this a prayer. Make this a truth. Connect it to your heart and your body. And inhale, even there. Exhale, my God will lead me and hold me. That was so very sunshiny and very uplifting. And it's wonderful for us to know that wherever, wherever we find ourselves, we know that we're not alone. We're not just stuck. We're not without someone who cares about us and someone who loves us, who's also capable of saving us because he has the power, he has the resource, and he has the know-how. So we're never alone. And aren't you happy that there's no escaping from Jehovah God and Jesus Christ? I know I'm very happy about that. So now it's time for your uh, uh, Bible challenge. How well do you know your Bible? Okay, your first question is true or false. The Bible is the most popular book ever written. Is that true or false? Next question. What is the first book in the Bible? I know that seems easy, but what is the first book? How many, next question, how many days did God take to create the world? How many days? And for a bonus question, who was the first man created? What was his name? Who was the first woman created? What was her name? And there you have it. <clears throat> my beautiful diamonds and my uh, TikTokers and Teletubbies. You know, I'm having a really, a, how you say, challenging day this morning. It happens to the best of us, but you know, I know what I have to do. I have to cut off some family members. And, and you got to cut them off because uh, they're toxic. And, and they're just not adding to your life. They have your blood pressure going from 120 over 70 to 160 over 100. No. We got to let these family members go. I don't care if they're my children. They're adults. They 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 uh you know they they know no they know how to maneuver in the world and it is what it is but you know I'm not the type to cut my children off but sometimes you're going to have to fall back I'm not never going to cut them off that's not going to happen <clears throat> they always have access to me but I'm just not going to make it as easy to have access to me it's not going to be so easy you're going to have to work to have my, you know, the, 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 the benefit of your mother. Because I'm done with this. These adult children and the way they're treating their parents, it's disgusting. So that's where I'm at right now. And that's why you see I'm a little discombobulated this morning. Because, uh, you know, having to realize that you're going to have to block. I already blocked my daughter. That, that hurts me. That I have to take it there. But I also have to look at my blood pressure when I'm talking to this girl. Trying to, oh, anyway, there you have it. And that's why I'm late this morning because I was going through it. As we all do, we have our moments, you know, some days are uh, more challenging than others. And it is what it is. But Jehovah God loves you. Jesus Christ loves you. And so do I. She the true love. I love you very much. Have an amazing day. At least try your best. And if you can't pray about it, that's what I do. Because the Holy Spirit is our comfort and it brings me peace. Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle.